Last but not least, we have to set up the SSSD, which, if you remember earlier, stands for uh, secure, sorry, System Security Services Daemon. Now, this is just as easy as some of the others, so the only exception in this case is that the file, the template, doesn't exist unlike the other packages. So you actually have to create the file from the beginning yourself. And that's not too difficult. And you'll see the conf, intent and password. And we start off with just some system declared names. So this is this part of the config. We're going to select services equal NSS and PAM. Oops, services. Uh, we have config file version equals two. And now we have the important domains equal uh, then we're going to have a config file that actually relates this domain config now you might be asking why would you need two separate lines the answer is actually very simple you can have multiple domains written in the config so you have to specify the configuration for each so we have an identity provider and again this can be different you can have multiple different identity providers in this case we've got AD and access <coughs> forgive me my typing is terrible today And again, we could have AD, and we could then specify an entire query string as to which groups based on that query string would have access from Active Directory. Now, there are some limitations with that. So we're gonna go for the type of simple. And the reason for this is because simple gives us the option to have uh, nested groups, which for those of you who work with Active Directory on a regular basis will know that nested groups can become quite complicated and a big thing and it is very important to have that on large enterprise environments because you quite often have uh, let's say as an example two three hundred groups that are have groups within groups and it's very difficult to specify always the individuals uh, we're also going to put here an override for the home directory so that when a user logs in unlike your regular users who would be placed under home we're going to put under home we're going to use a percent sign for the directory and then we're going to use a percent sign for the username so what this means is that for a active directory user it would be something like home slash lab slash and then username <clears throat> now you can also use uh, simple allow groups or users so you could put simple oops simple allow group equals and then we could have something like Linux admins and we could have a second group called Linux users and so on and so forth now I'm not going to actually use these so I'm just going to hash this out for a second and that's it I've, I've finished the configuration I don't actually need to add anything more I could uh, as an example you can also have simple users so I could just change this and then I would have users at name of domain uh, but this is good enough for me, so I'm going to finish here. So I'm just going to exit. I'm going to save that. And that's done. Now I need to do one more thing before I finish, which is I need to make sure that I have the host file correctly set. So I'm just going to 
go in to the host file and check what's there. And as you can see, we don't have any entry for this machine. So I'm going to put in this machine. And this needs to be done with the domain name. Because this is the entry that's going to get created in Active Directory later. So I'm just going to save that and I'm going to go. And that's done. And that's the last part of the config. So now what we've got to do is restart some services and join the domain.